Hello, I'm Glorious Liar. Today I'm going to be straying slightly from my typical glitch explanation videos. Instead I will be explaining how we can use glitches to accomplish feats that would otherwise be impossible. For example, have you ever wondered if you can get a collectible without any of the intended prerequisites? In DK64, regardless of what the collectible is, it seems that the answer is always yes, you can get a specific collectible before intended. In this video, I will be explaining how you can collect the keys long before you are supposed to. Let's begin. Here is a visualization of the order in which you are supposed to collect things to progress in the game. You have golden bananas, keys, colored bananas which lead to banana medals, coins, and crowns, not to mention other consumables such as ammo and film. For simplicity, I have left out colored bananas from this graph, because it turns out to be pretty easy to ignore them. Normally, you'd need to collect colored bananas to gain access to the boss rooms, but by performing an out-of-bounds glitch in the Troffenskopf room, such as a moon kick, you can ignore them entirely. Here are the colored banana counts from the boss doors in each level. It is quite amazing that we do not need to collect this many to get any of the keys. Additionally, there is a door in Hideout Helm that requires the Rare Rare Coin, which you can only gain access to by collecting 15 medals and beating the Jetpack minigame. It also requires that you beat DK Arcade. As it turns out, you can bypass that requirement too, but more on that later. Let me take a minute to explain this chart. Arrows denote a prerequisite for the collectible in question. You need one golden banana to get into Japes where you will find Key 1. Five golden bananas in Key 1 give you access to Aztec. Key 2 unlocks Factory and Galleon and requires 15 and 30 golden bananas to get inside. Key 3 is only required for free NK Lumsy, which gives you access to K Rule. Key 4 unlocks the Canine to Fungi, and 50 golden bananas are required to gain access. Key 5 unlocks Caves and Castle, which requires 65 and 80 golden bananas. Key 6 and 7 combined unlock the Mouth to Hideout Helm, and 100 golden bananas are required to get inside. Key 8 requires all that before it, plus Nintendo coin, Rare Rare coin, and 4 crowns. Clearly it is the key with the most obstacles in its path. As it turns out, every B locker in the game can be bypassed as well, through a variety of methods. Here is an example of getting into Aztec by simply putting your back flat against B locker and touching the DK portal with just the tip of DK's hands, bypassing the required banana count. The Nintendo and Rare Rare coin door as well as the crown door can be skipped by going out of bounds and hideout helm. This brings the requirement to get all the keys down to almost nothing. But what if we wanted to get the keys in reverse order? Starting from 8, then to 7, to 6, all the way down to 1. The only thing stopping us now is access to the levels themselves. As it turns out, we can get to every level early if we're clever, and I'm about to show you how. In order to achieve this, I will be using two files. This is necessary to set up a warp to Creepy Castle, because without Key 5, the cannon in DK Isles is inaccessible. There are technically other ways to get there, but the method I will be using makes two files necessary. The purpose of the first file is essentially set up for the warp to castle. The second file will be the one in which we collect the keys in reverse order. I'll be skipping a bunch of steps in the setup file, but to summarize, we need all the Kongs so that they may purchase their moves to beat K. Rule, Keys 3 and 8 in order to access the K. Rule fight, and Key 5 so that Castle Lobby is accessible for a wrong warp later. Once this file is set up, we can begin the key collection. Also, just as a note, I won't be going much in depth into a lot of the glitches in this video, because the depth and complexity of some of the exploits are out of the scope of this video. I'll leave it to you to look up the glitches I mentioned in the video, as many other people in the DK64 speedrunning community have made videos on these, and most are commonplace in speedruns. The main purpose of this video is to show that when we chain these exploits together, we can highlight how broken the game really is, and how transparently false so many of the so-called requirements really are. Now for the first key, Key 8. Right out of the gate, we can leave training grounds by performing swim through vertical walls by leaving first person in the range of values called the phase angle. We swim straight into the loading zone which extends below the ground and enter DK Isles. I've omitted the fact that I also completed the dive barrel, which gives access to swimming, but that's not important. Next we need to perform tag barrel storage. 
I talked about this in my last video, but Tag Barrel Storage is a glitch that stores properties of the Tag Barrel itself while giving control back to the player. If DK Skid jumps, crouches, and then uncrouches while entering the barrel, Tag Barrel Storage is achieved. Next we swim over to Krem Isle and remote tag out of range of the barrel. By tagging out of range of the barrel you'll notice that DK is now invisible. This property allows us to execute what's called a telegrab. Telegrabbing roughly doubles the difference between your actual position and your stored position, which is initially at the origin from the tag barrel storage glitch. When you appear invisible like this, your stored position does not update from frame to frame. Pulling up on a ledge does a quick calculation on this position differential, and in this state it warps you well above the initial ledge height. We will abuse this twice to get up to the snout, and roll through a piece of weak collision in the eye to fall straight into Hideout Helm's loading zone. This is called eye clip. From here, we can moon kick over to a far wall, land on a pipe that allows us to clip out of bounds, and roll around the room past B Locker, skipping the 100 golden banana requirement. We're now inside Hideout Helm without a single collectible. Once inside Helm, we need to get all the way to the back with DK. We start by abusing a slope reset glitch to get past the first slope that normally requires Lanky to orang sand up it. The wall stops our backward momentum out of a jump, so we can successively jump up it. Once we're at the pineapple switch, we can mooncake off it to clip through a seam in the wall above it. Once out of bounds here, we navigate to Chunky's room. Out of bounds preserves the last floor height you stood over, so by backflipping up to a piece of collision that sticks slightly out of bounds in Chunky's room, we can gain height and navigate around the Blastomatic room with a height that lets us get to the next important area. After navigating to the room with the crown door, we can skip this as well as the next door that requires the Nintendo and Rareware coins. With careful positioning, we can wedge ourselves between a terminal and a small ledge and slide right through the wall. From here, we make our way all the way to the back room with key A and collect it. We reset after collecting it to stop the Blastomatic timer and to set up the warp to Creepy Castle using the setup file we created. Next we need to activate Intro Story Glitch. Intro Story Glitch is a powerful glitch activated by canceling the Intro Story from the main menu in a short window while it is starting up. By canceling this, the Intro Story's timer continues to run in the background with some cool properties. The Intro Story is segmented into multiple parts, and the fadeouts to go from scene to scene are triggered by the background timer running. It is programmed to execute a fadeout from one map to the next, activating a certain numbered cutscene on the other end. If you are in a cutscene, any cutscene, and a fadeout is triggered, it will attempt to continue the intro story on the next scene queued. If we can avoid these fadeouts, such as by interrupting them with another load transition from the training barrels, we can continue through the game without fear of getting pulled into the intro story. The purpose of activating ISG here is to enter a bonus barrel in Castle Lobby on the setup file, setting the parent map to where we came from. This value and memory is shared among many sub-areas, so you return to the right spot on exiting. If a fadeout is triggered from inside the bonus barrel, such as from the introduction cutscene of the bonus game, we will get pulled into the intro story, leaving the parent map as Castle Lobby untouched. Normally this value would get wiped out if we were to just save and quit back to the menu. A workaround is achieved by beating K. Rule and watching the credits, putting us back in the main menu without wiping this value out. Back to our key collecting file. If we enter and exit Snides and DK Isles, it will return us to the parent map value we set up, wrong warping us to Castle Lobby, even though it is not unlocked. This is called a flashback warp. We can now enter Castle and get key 7. Here we'll be executing a B locker skip that works in most lobbies, the same method I showed earlier. Once inside, we need to intentionally die in order to prevent a crash entering Trophenskopf. We can also unlock all the Kongs we need here, by performing an exploit called Castle Kongs. The cutout fight gives you all the Kongs, regardless of if they're unlocked, in a set order. So by exiting the fight on the right Kong, we can just enter a tag barrel and they are unlocked permanently. After this, we grab Key 7 and leave. Now we're in go mode. Time for the rest of the boss rush.
We can get into caves early with a moon kick on the slope outside the lobby and pulling ourselves up through a weak corner in the rock. Then we skip the bee locker by slapping in with DK. From here we fight Army Dillo and collect T6. Now for a significant sequence break. You might be thinking, why are we going to Aztec? Well, we can actually get key 5 here, all in due time. By throwing a bunch of oranges rapidly in first person, the resulting lag from the explosion gives us a speed boost large enough to clip through the solid door blocking angry Aztec lobby. Lag is quite apparent in this game, so the developers give you a speed boost during lag to try to mask this. We skip B Locker with the aforementioned slap method. Once inside the boss, we get the trick that allows us to grab key 5 instead of key 2. Since the Dogadon boss is reused in Fungi Forest, the actor during this fight shares some properties across both fights. By damaging Dogadon with a well-placed barrel and getting damaged at the same time, for some odd reason this actually spawns key 5 instead of key 2. The unintended damage method causes the boss actor to reach a death state from its Fungi Forest fight, rather than the Aztec death state. We could get this key from Fungi Forest, but I thought it'd be neat to show this off instead. The door from Aztec is still raised, so we reset to get out and back to DK Isles. From here we can swim through a weak seam in the Krem Isles ship, and straight to the Galleon Lobby loading zone. We skip B Locker with the usual method. We go straight to Troffenskopf, fight Puff Toss, get Key 4, and leave. We can take Warp 4 tagged earlier to get to Frantic Factory. The door blocking us is actually intangible, and we can walk right through it. Once in the lobby, we can't actually slap in normally, so we lag boost through instead. It's more difficult, but not too hard. Inside Factory, we need to get to a Troffenskopf. The easiest way without opening the hatch is to lag boost out of bounds and roll into the storage room where Chunky is, and use that portal. We can fight Magic with Tiny by performing a ledge clip on the stairs. Ledge clips are a precise seam clip that allow you to get out of bounds by falling off a ledge connected to a vertical wall. It's easiest to perform by using C up to stop your momentum right as you fall off the ledge. From here we walk to the boss loading zone, fight Magic, and collect key 3. Now, we can go right back to Aztec and pick up Key 2 that we left earlier. Despite already beating Dagadon in Aztec, the portals are still there so long as we haven't collected Key 2. This time we have to beat Dagadon normally, which is not difficult at all. Now all that's left is Key 1 and Japes. We don't actually need to get to Japes early, but hey, why not show it off? By kicking off the high ledge by Aztec, we can clip through the rock blocking Japes. The top of it actually has no collision. Once inside Jape's lobby, we can clip out of bounds and hit the DK portal from behind. Alternatively, you can slap in, but it's incredibly precise. It's also fairly trivial to collect one golden banana by this point, but I want to highlight that that's unnecessary. All that's left is beating Army Dillo and collecting Key 1. That's it. We've now collected every key in reverse order, starting with Helm and ending with Jigs, all in the same file. We did use the setup file, but it was only used to set up a wrong warp to bypass the castle cannon. I hope you enjoyed the video as I've composed it. I understand that I glossed over a lot of technical information here, but I will leave that to other source material for now. Who knows, maybe I'll go in depth into any number of the exploits showed off here in a future video. I'll leave it at that. Until next time. Thanks for watching.